All right, here we go, guys. Hey, everyone. Welcome to Live From Lockdown, and we are now in our 21st week. Can you believe that? We've been doing this for 21 weeks now. So how are you guys doing? I hope uh, everybody's good out there. Um, sounds like everybody can hear me. And uh, we've got some fun things we're going to be doing today. We're going to jump in to do some compositing stuff. And I've got some really cool resources I want to share with you guys that I think you're going to find fun that I kind of figured out. And we're also going to do a... Sorry, getting my water there. We're going to do a nice composite. And then we're going to do Fix My Photo. We've got lots of good stuff for you this week. And uh, what I'll do, because it took us a second to get everything up and running here, I will... Um, We'll do all our shout outs and everything. We'll do that at the end when we all get together and we'll hang out and have a good time. And uh, questions and answers, of course. If you get any questions, feel free to uh, post those questions and, uh, and I will answer those the best I can. And also we'll have a session at the end. We'll do a questions and answers session where we, uh, we do that. So if you guys are new here, welcome. Uh, this is uh, our Live From Lockdown. We do this every single Thursday at one o'clock uh, where we come together as a community and this is where we do our, um, you know, Photoshop. We have some fun and we hang out. So, all right, guys, are you guys ready? And let me just click on here and I'm going to make sure that you guys can see everything. So can you guys see the Photoshop desktop and everything? Okay, let me know. And so this is the nice thing about the uh, the live chat here too is that we can interact and we can chat live and um, we'll see whose photos we're going to fix this week but we'll get to that all right so what we're going to do though is we're going to start with something interesting we're going to start with this fix my photo uh, sorry start my fix my photo let me get my brain straight um, we're going to be starting with a composite so let's have a look and see what we've got right now um, I want to show you something interesting. So let me show you. This is basically the sort of composite we're going to do here. It's going to look something like this. It might be a little bit different. I'm just bringing it up on my screen. Um, so I was just kind of fooling around. I came up with something like this yesterday. So we're going to create something like this. It might not be exactly this particular image, um, but I want to show you some different things like one, where I can find things that I can use to put these composites together because you obviously might not have photos of all these components and then different ways of combining the photos so we can um, just kind of strategize as you can kind of get my thinking behind it and also where do I source all these different things that we're using so some of these things that I'm using are free and some of them are paid so one of the things I want to show you guys which is really cool is I'm gonna go up under my window here and you won't have it yet but I'll show you how to get it is under extensions I've got this free stock search. So something that came up last week when we were talking about working with photos and I showed how to use Adobe stock to find photos. And of course we can, and the girl here is actually from Adobe stock, but you can also get free stock. So there's different sites on the web with free stock and some people brought that up. And so I found this extension here that you can use to search it. So if I was going to type in cyberpunk, this goes out to a bunch of different free stock sites and finds photographs that literally are free to use. And so we can see there's one that we use, which is our background. So why don't we just open this? I'm just gonna close out the other one. We're gonna start again. And all I need to do is just double click and it's gonna download this and it opens it. And there we go. So we've got this, it's, it's uh, free to use. And some of them in here, you, as you roll over, you'll see some is from Shutterstock, some are from Adobe Stock and some of these are free. Now, if you go down here and you choose to buy the pro version, I, I think it gets rid of the sponsored ones. But let me show you how to find this and other things that you can put inside of Photoshop. So if we go here and we choose window and we find this option to find extensions on Exchange. So when I click this, what it does is it opens a web page, and this is a little bit bigger there we go it's sizing to fit my screen let me just resize that this takes you to Adobe Exchange 
Now, how many of you use Mac? Don't you wish there was a button that you could just push that would just fill the screen like before without going into this full screen mode? Because um, I don't like the full screen mode. It just kind of takes over onto the different desktop. So I wish I could just maximize that. If anyone knows a trick about that, post it in the comments. Okay, so there's different extensions here and you could go through here and you can find different ones. Some of these are free. Some of these are paid. But this is the one here is the one I found free stock search and just you can click on it there and essentially just go in there I've acquired it but you would have a button there where you just click it and then it's going to install it into Photoshop and then once that's installed in Photoshop all you got to do is restart and then go under window and then under extensions this is where all these different extensions are going to come that you load into Photoshop so how many did you guys know about this so this is really good, you know, for doing things like, you know, I want to play around, I want to experiment, I want to try some different things. Um, we can do this. And of course, the other option is always to go under the libraries here. And in libraries, of course, we can also search in Adobe Start. And if I hit Cyberpunk, it's going to come in here and it's going to find some different images and, you know, different assets that we can find there. And of course, if we want to use anything from, you know, Adobe Stock, we can just simply uh, drag it in here. But what it will do is it will give us a watermarked version that we can play around with. And uh, it's lower res. And then if you want and you decide, hey, you know what, this is something that I want to use or I want to keep, then you can just license it and then you can use it in your commercial projects that will change it to the high res image and it will also get rid of the watermark. So there's lots of different options there. And the nice thing about the Adobe Stock is it appears directly inside your library. So we're going to be using both of these. So what I did is, let me just go to a different library here. And last week, if you guys remember, we went through libraries and you want to know more about them. And just kind of check that out. And, uh, and you'll find that. And notice that that image that we had there, this is the image that we're using. I actually was able to share it and copy it in my library. So last week's goes on about the library. All right, so I decided I wanted to use the woman here from Adobe Stock. And the funny thing is she actually came up under the free stock search. And um, obviously it's not free to use the high res version, but I kind of liked her and I thought, you know what? This is a good model to use. It's a good cyberpunk look. So we're gonna use her in our composite. So she's from Adobe Stock and then the rest of it we're just gonna use from the different free stuff. And this one came from Unsplash Photo was the site on the background. And we'll use different ones. So let's cut her out quickly. So what we're gonna do is grab the object or the quick selection tool, either one of these tools, and then just choose select subject. And you know what, for the sake of illustration, this is gonna be good enough. I'm gonna hold down the outer option key, click on the mask, and of course I always get these wrong. Command I if you do it the wrong way, and we've cut her out. Now, of course, you know, you could go into select a mask and go in there and make sure you get a better selection. Um, actually, let's have a look and see how good this is. It's not bad, actually. It's pretty good. So this is going to be good enough for what we want to do. All right. So what we've done now is we've just put our person inside the environment. So this is a good kind of place to start. Now, sometimes when I do composites, what I'll do is the first thing I'm going to do is just get my elements in, size them, position them, and start to build a composition. You know, um, start to tell a story, different things like that. Um, you know, you might even say, you know what, maybe she's going to look better over here on the left. Compositionally wise, it's probably better. But, um, you know, it doesn't really matter. We can just put it wherever we want. So I'm going to put it here and... So what we're going to do is just get our elements, position them, and then we're going to add coloring and atmosphere and all the other cool stuff. So let's go into the free search and see what else is in here. So this is a panel, so of course we can just tear this off. And I'm just dragging it out. Let's see what we've got that looks interesting. I'm going to scroll down and look at the images. So we're just looking at these are the different images that we could just drag in. There's that one there. It was the one from Adobe Stock. That's how I found that. Um, let's load next results. So we're going to go down, have a look, see what else is in here. Okay. You might recognize that. I'm going to click on this one and we're going to do this. And it just drops it on top of the photo. Let's find something else. Let's grab this one. 
And all we do is just click and it drops it on top of the photo. All right, let's collapse this, move this to the side. So how are you guys doing? You doing good there? Um, <laughs> all right, thank you, photo maker. Photo maker just hit the thumbs up because I gave him the uh, tip there. He liked that tip. So by the way, guys, um, if you don't mind, hit that thumbs up and that's the like button and it will help the algorithm with this and let other people know um, that live streams going on. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit the subscribe button. All right, so let's continue. So let's keep positioning things. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to drop this into the background. I'm just going to hide all the other stuff right now. And let's hit control T. Control T comes into free transform. And I just love free transform does a lot of different things. Right click and then I can do these different things like I want to flip it horizontal. Let's do that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put it over here somewhere. So this is going to serve a couple of purposes. One, it's going to enable us to, you know, put a little bit more of a story and also it's going to hide these guys because I don't really like them and they're, they're not really helping with the particular story we're trying to tell right now. So we can position this and I'm just going to hit enter. All right, that's kind of cool. And let's go ahead and I like this. It's kind of surreal. So we're going to pop him up here somewhere. We'll figure out where we're going to put him in a minute. And then we've got our woman here. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to start to put these different pieces together to tell our story. Now, we can go in and we can do these selections inside of Photoshop. But sometimes we don't even have to create elaborate selections. Sometimes we can just do this with a brush. And we can just blend things together, which is what we're going to do right now. So let's hide these two. And what we want to do is just blend this in. So it kind of fits into the area there. So what we're going to do is apply a layer mask. So let's go down and tap on the layer mask here. And now we get the mask. And I'm sure by now you guys know how masks work. If not, I have tutorials. I even have a beginner's tutorial on layers mask on the Photoshop channel there and also on Photoshop Cafe. So what I'm going to do is I want to grab a brush, just a soft edge brush, and I want to make it black. And I'm going to use this to blend in this image. So let's go down here. We're going to grab our brush. Let's grab the brush tool. And we're going to go up under here and we're going to turn our hardness all the way down. And let's make the brush a little bit bigger. Now I'm just tapping the bracket key, left or right bracket key. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. We can also hold down, I believe, the control alt or option and we can drag up or down or side to side to change the size of that brush side to side will change the size up and down will change the hardness you can also change that to opacity by the way in preferences if you prefer it to go that way and on windows that's going to be alt right drag to change the size all right so here we are we've got black we set it to 100 percent and we're just going to paint and i'm using my wacom tablet if you don't have a Wacom tablet, it's fine. Just use your mouse or whatever you have. And see what we're doing? We're just blending it in. And I'm not going necessarily for perfection here. I just want to just kind of blend that in. All right, great. So we can see we're starting to blend this that easily. It's starting to just kind of blend into the photo. Now, this is not going to be one of those tutorials where we're going in and looking for pixel perfect edges and precision. This is going to be more, you know, just exploring our creativity. And also, by the time I add the rest of it, you're not really going to notice. So sometimes, you know, there's those times when you're doing a particular type of composite where you're combining images um, and they have to be very, very pixel perfect. And then there's other times where, you know, you're just wasting time doing that. And in a situation like this, I'm spending too much time on some of these edges. You're just wasting time. All right, so let's go ahead now and we're going to put this chap here. So let's hit Control T once again. Make sure I select the right layer for free transform. Now notice too that these are smart objects. You can see this little icon here that says so it's a smart object. And the nice thing about a smart object is I can scale it down. I can scale it back up. And it's not going to lose any quality. Obviously, you can't scale it larger than its original size without some kind of data loss. All right, so we're just going to size them down a little bit. And I want to just kind of position 
but I'm not sure how I want it yet. So why don't I drop the opacity down? So I'm just going to tap the 5 key. No, not enough. Let's go to the 8 key. There we go. And that gives me 80% opacity. And now I can just kind of go through here and say, you know what, where do I want this to go? Um, maybe down here might look kind of interesting. Okay, I'm going to put that right there. And let's go back to 100%. And now we're just going to blend it out. Now the 100%, I just tapped the 0 key. So I'm going to add a layer mask. Grab my brush, and we're just going to start blending this in. Now, if you were using um, your tablet, we could click on this icon up at the top left here, and this will open brush settings. And notice I've got transfer set to pen pressure for opacity. So that means the harder I press, the more of that effect is going to happen. And if I press lightly, as you can see there, it doesn't. Uh, mask is harshly so we can just kind of blend in and it enables me to just kind of shade it in almost like you would with a pencil now there are times when you might want to do a hard edge at the top there so let's do this let's just grab our polygon lasso tool and i'm going to start here i'm going to go to there do three and then you don't have to close it just hit the enter key will close it when you're doing that make sure the mask is selected and i'm going to fill this with black if you hit the D key, it resets the foreground background colors, and you'll see that black is the background. If you hold down Command, and that would be Control on Windows, and hit the backslash key, that will delete. All right, so see how we get a nice, clean, crisp edge across the top there, and then the rest of the edges I'm just kind of blending in. That's working fine for what we're doing. Let me just check, see how you guys are doing there. Rod Shelley says this is right up his alley. He does all kinds of compositing for his gravel work, uh, his graphics work. That's great. Don't worry, Michael, you're late. We've got lots of cool things we're doing here. And um, that's great. Well, thank you uh, there for the nice comments. So any questions, you guys get lost or whatever, just drop those questions in there and then we will come back to those. All right, so we're kind of starting to get somewhere. Let's pop our model back in. All right, so things are starting to come together. Now, one of the tricks I love to do is color. I love to do a lot with color. In fact, color is one of my strengths. If you haven't uh, followed my videos before, um, it's one of the things I really like to use. And color is a great tool. It can invoke emotion. But another thing color is great for is when you're working with compositing and doing things like this. This is a cyberpunk style. We can bring it all together by doing color overlays, and it helps us so much with making all these pieces just kind of come into one image. So I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, what colors are we gonna do here? I think it's pretty obvious because of our model, also the background. But I'm thinking on here, and I'd like to split it in colors too. One of the things that's popular when we do this um, cyberpunk style is to put this magenta or pink color. And then obviously we've got neon here, so, and we just happen to get lucky here with the coloring on our model. So we're going to pop that on that side. And then on the other side, we're going to go for more of a blue, kind of almost similar to the color we have right now. So what we're going to do is go to a layer above, and we're just going to create a new layer. And with this new layer, I'm going to grab a gradient. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the gradient tool. I'm going to make sure it's set here. Now let's change this. From basics let's click under here and I want to do this option here and by the way this is a tip I do I drag these above there so I don't have to open the basics anymore because these are the gradients I'm going to be using all the time so this first one is foreground to transparent this is probably going to work quite well all right let's get our foreground color grab our color picker and let's move it out of the way because I actually want to sample from the image so notice how I can just move around here and I can just click anywhere and sample these colors. So I like this and I'm even going to increase the saturation, make it more of a hot pink. Click OK. All right. And now we want to apply this gradient. Of course, I always do it the wrong way. I pretty much do that every time. So I'm going to start here and go halfway across. And you know what? That's looking pretty good. So let's change this to color. Notice now we've got this color across everything. All right, let's create a new one. New layer. 
let's go in here we're gonna grab our color picker once again and this time maybe we could sample some of this color and I feel like I might even push it not nah, this pretty good all right so let's try it here so we're gonna go across I always do it the wrong way <laughs> we're gonna go across this way apply that color and now we're gonna change this to color blend mode all right so you can see what's happening already it's starting to bring the pieces together already now it's a little intense so let's bring the color down a little bit so I'm gonna go up under the opacity and I'm just gonna pull this down a little bit in fact I'm gonna take it all the way down to nothing and I'm just gonna pull it up a little bit just so we can see it start to influence that image great let's do the same thing on the left side so now we've selected the color here I'm gonna take the opacity all the way down let's bring it up a bit and notice how now we've still got some color but now it's tying everything together so if we look at this before without any coloring and then we look at afterwards with the coloring see how now it's starting to bring the image together and um, now it doesn't look so disjointed like different pieces of photos from different places all right so this is uh, essentially you know we've just built the foundation or the basis of our composite now there are things I might do, you know, like I might go in here and put little details in, start compositing different things, you know, like maybe panels and, and different things like that on here. Actually, why don't we have a look and see if we can do that? That'd be kind of fun. So let's look under these uh, photos and see if we got panel. Panel might not be a good um, word to be searching for, but let's see what we get. Mm. Now let's do screen. All right, so we're searching here, looking for screens. And I'm just scrolling through here. Oh, look, there's that picture. And let's load more. I'm not really seeing anything that I'm in love with just yet. You know what? <laughs> let's just do for fun. Why don't we grab this old TV? I think this will be just kind of fun. Not something you're really going to see that often in a futuristic image, but we're doing steampunk so we're combining styles all right what I want to do is I want to cut out this TV oh and see these in the background those could be really cool too so this is where you would just add little elements so let's grab our object selection tool and the first thing I want is a TV so I'm just gonna go around that TV and well wow, object selection didn't work great on that one did it let me do the alter option key take that away alter option and I'm dragging and I'm just trying to refine that edge there we go that's a little bit better try it one more time not bad all right so I'm gonna hit control J copies that to a new layer hide everything else now watch what happens I drag it underneath my colors and boom control T for free transform once again drag the corner down and you know I don't know we could drop this in here somewhere maybe rotate a little bit boom just drop that in now of course you know we could do things here in this case I'm thinking the lights coming this way let's put a little shadow in there so let's go down FX and choose drop shadow so there's that drop shadow pop that up and then we're just gonna drag on the image yep you can do that for drop shadow by the way when you work with layer styles you can just drag on the image to move them around and this is the layer style right there I'm just going with a pretty simple uh, drop shadow nothing fancy just basically default click OK all right so we're starting to get something a little bit more interesting you know I could paint a glow around the edge there and then, you know those are the kind of things I would do a lot let's go back in here and you know I could grab some of these radio components here and you could start to stack these up so why don't we do something like that let's grab one of these and if I really wanted to save time, I could just to edit. Okay, let me slow that down because you're going to be like, what you do? So I'm going to go edit. And I'm going to define a brush. That'll work. And we'll just call it thing. I don't even know if this will work. Um, I could just copy it, copy it out. And let me do that too, just to be sure. Make sure we've got that. Control J. All right. So we've got a copy of it there. I'm curious if this will work as a brush though. So let's have a look here and 
what would happen if I applied this as a brush? Let me drop it down. Oh, okay, there we go. See, I can drop little components in there. It's kind of fun. What would it look like? It's white. And see what I'm doing here is I'm just experimenting a little bit. And this is part of the, you know, the fun of doing this is just experimenting and seeing what looks good and what doesn't. Eh, not really digging it as a brush, but it doesn't matter because we've got it here as a layer. So we can take that down, make it a little smaller maybe. And if I hold the Alt or the Option key, I can drag out a couple of copies of this. And essentially I'm just building up some panels here on there. So let's grab the three of them, put them in a group, hit Control G. Now one of the things I do when I'm going to apply a layer style, which I am, I'm going to apply that drop shadow. Sometimes I put it into a group, then I can apply it to all of them at the same time. So I don't have to apply three drop shadows. So why don't we steal the drop shadow we already created, hold down the Alt or the Option key, click and drag from effects, drop it into our group, and boom, it copies that shadow. And yes, you can do that with any um, of these layer styles. All right, so let's drag this now. We're going to drag it underneath the colors. So now it starts to match our scene. And see what we're doing now. We're just kind of starting to build up little pieces. So that's one of the other things you guys can do, you know, when you're working on these kind of composites, if you enjoy that kind of thing, is just play around and build these up. Now, generally, if I was doing this, you know, in the real world, I would take a little bit more time. You know, I would go in here, um, you know, because I'm just basically, you know, doing this for a tutorial right now. And so we don't have all day. But what I would do is I would grab this and I would probably create a layer. Let me just show you. I'll create a layer above it. And I want this layer to be inside the other layer so we stay inside the lines when we paint. So let me demonstrate that. In fact, before I do it, why don't I just paint so you can see what I mean. So I'm going to hit the X key. I'm just going to paint with white. And I need to grab a brush. And I don't want to paint with this component. Of course, it's there and it's going to be in my libraries in case I need it later on. You know, that might come in use for something else. So, you know, it's never a waste to create a, um, a brush. So I could go in here and I could just, you know, start to paint around the edge of that TV screen. I'm holding the shift key, by the way, to draw in a straight line. Notice that, you know, we're outside of the line, but this is why I created this above that layer. If I hold the Alt or the Option key and I go between the two layers and I click, boom, it clips it to there. And now look at that. See how now that light is starting to hit the top of that TV? And so those are the little details you might want to do on the different components and stuff like that to make it look like this neon light is actually hitting them. So those are the kind of details that I would go through just to make the whole composition feel more realistic. You know, we're not going to do all of these today. Now, on that same note, Maybe this light here is hitting her and um, let me do a school teacher thing. <laughs> Create a new layer. Um, and I say a school teacher thing is like school teachers love to like just draw on pictures. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. And this light is coming this way. See, there we go. So if this light is coming from here and, you know, it's going to come up here. It's obviously, if you look at our model here, notice she's illuminated. You can see she's illuminated there because that light is hitting her. Now, some of this light's going to hit our model here. Now, it's going to have some attenuation, meaning it's going to not be as bright by the time it hits her. Um, you know, an inverse square law kind of thing, you know. So it's going to be not that much light, but we should have some kind of a rim around her arm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here and um, I'm just going to create a new layer. And I think I saw a comment up there in the corner there. Um, don't worry, Lynette, if you're late, there's still plenty of good things here. Um, someone just asked, when stock images load in Smart Objects and do the selections retain the Smart Object format? Um, let me get to those questions in a little bit. Let me just focus on this. So if you guys remember where I, you know, I created this bright area and then I clipped it, you don't have to you know, wait till you after you've created. So I'm just going to clip it at the very beginning. So I'm going to hold that alter option key. You'll see that little arrow. And that means anything on this layer is now going to be constrained to the transparency of the layer directly beneath it. And in this case, it's that mask. 
So whatever I paint in here is going to constrain to the shape of that mask, which is obviously the shape of our model. Let me show you. There's that brush. See that? So I don't have to worry about being precise and going over the edges because I'm not. Okay, let's grab our white brush again. And what I want to do is, I'm actually, I'm not going to use white. Let's hit the Alt or the Option key, and I'm going to sample here. I'm going to pick up just a little bit of that bluish color. That's nice. You see what's happening? With the Alt or the Option key, it will sample with the brush selected. Whatever you click on, it will sample that color. All right, so let's get here, and I want to make sure I get a little bit of that blue. Great. And now I'm just going to make these edges around here. Now, don't worry if it looks kind of crazy because it does. Um, I'm just going to go like that. And I probably wouldn't go so much on the shoulder. It would go there. Maybe a little bit on the hair. And a little bit of, uh, not so much there. A little bit of rim might catch on here. All right. So let me go a little bit more. Try not to do too much. But see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of picking up that rim where that light would be. Now these brush strokes are not very even, but it doesn't matter because all I need to do now is just blur it. Filter, blur, and then we're going to use our Gaussian blur and see how I can just blur this. And as I blur it, see how it just kind of wraps around? Yeah. And nice and easy there. And you know, I think it's a little bit much there, so I want to reduce that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a layer mask. And this area on her body is too much. I'm going to drop that down by about 50%. The easy way to do that with a layer mask selected is just create 50% gray. So I can hit shift delete to bring up the fill dialog box and choose 50% gray. Or you could just click here and then choose 50% gray in here. Just go down to brightness 50. That's another way to get 50% gray. Either way will work. All right, so now that we've got our 50% gray, oops, looks like I filled my mask entirely. That wasn't my intention. Let me undo that. With that layer mask selected now, 50% gray in the foreground, I can paint and notice it removes half of that. So now we've got more of a rim hitting the arm, and I'm going to take a little bit off that wrist because it probably wouldn't get as much either. Actually, let me drop that down a little bit. Let's go a bit bigger with the brush and just gently. Okay, there we go. And see what we're doing? We're able to reduce it in one area and have it a little bit stronger in another area. All right. So now we've just kind of started putting things together. There's something that I want to add now. I want to give it some atmosphere. And let me open up Bridge because I've got some cool overlays. Now, of course, you know, you can search for your own overlays. This is coming soon. Let me go here. Um, I got this set from, it's called Mystical Lighting Lights add-on from, um, from Design Cuts. And it has a bunch of these cool lights. So these are like really cool overlays. And so I kind of like using these and I'll show you how these work. They're so cool. Um, I'm just going to drag them. Well, let me, before I do, let me just show you a way. So let me show you this trick. There's four different folders here. And I don't want to have to keep going into the folders and say, okay, which light do I want? I want to show all the folders at the same time. So this is Adobe Bridge, by the way. All you need to do is just click on there and then choose show items from subfolders. And it'll take a second. And it's just going to go and it's just going to load up all the images from all the different folders into Bridge at once. So there we, there we go. So I don't have to, you know, keep digging through folders trying to find things. So I'm just looking in here and I'm wondering what might, what might be good. This might be kind of interesting. So I'm going to drag it across. I'm just going to move bridge onto the second screen. Um, let me collapse that. We haven't got to that yet. Wow, I've got a number of instances of that open. I'll tell you what I'll do. Just so you guys can see what I'm doing, I'm going to shrink this down. Let's see if it works. Might be hard to work on one screen like this. How many of you guys use multiple screens? You know, when you use multiple screens, it's very hard to go back and just use a single screen. Um, okay, so I'm just scrolling through here, looking at these different ones. Some of these look really cool. I'm just looking for one that I think would look nice. Where's that overlay one that we had before? Here we go. Watch this. I'm just going to drag this onto the image. And now... I'm just going to hold the Alt or the Option key, and this is going to expand it from the middle. 
and I'm just making this nice and big. And let's put it above everything. So I'm dragging it to the top of the layer stack. Okay, so right now it's not really doing much, is it? But when we go into the different modes like lighten, screen, color dodge, see what we're doing now? Linear dodge, see how we're starting to add this kind of atmosphere, like there's this kind of chaos going on. Let me go to screen mode and I'm gonna pull this down a little bit. So I'm just gonna lower it a little bit and see what it's doing. It's just adding a little atmosphere, you know, like now we're a little more post-apocalyptic, things blowing around. I'm going to create a layer mask though because I don't want to be covering up our model as much as we do the background. So that this is going to kind of we're going to sandwich her in here. So let's grab the brush tool. And I'm going to go with the brush tool. I'm going to paint it away from around her face. I'm still using that 50% gray which is good. So that means it's not completely removing it, but it's just reducing it a little bit. And let's go down here. And by doing this, what it does is it sandwiches our model oops that's a little too much let me go a little bigger just trying to do this talking and compositing at the same time is not always easy and so what i'm doing here is see now it looks like some's in front of her and some of it's behind her and what it's doing is it's adding atmosphere and it's kind of putting her in position in space so it's adding more depth to the image and let's just look at what we did here there's the before and after just applying that let's have a look at some other ones let me go here to bridge there we go and there's all kinds of interesting ones that we could be applying here um i love these kind of things how many of you guys use these kind of things and enjoy them so what might be interesting this might be interesting i don't know if it's going to be any good or not Sometimes you just see things and you're just like, okay, what's this going to look like? Let's just drop this on here. Might be a little crazy, but let's see. And we go into here. Uh, we could go into these screen modes. Oh, wow. Okay, that's kind of trippy. It's kind of interesting. Um, I might make that bigger. Control T. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it out just so we get a little bit in the edge of the photo. See that? And it just kind of is interesting. So if I was to just get rid of the other one and just have this, see how that's adding an interesting look? And if you drag it under the color layers, it's also going to take on the colors and the rest of the image. Oh, and I think that's actually kind of looking pretty neat. So it gives us a kind of neat um, effect there. Um, so it's, how did you bring in Bridge as a second window inside Photoshop? If you hit Control uh, N, for control new you can open up different windows of bridge at the same time so um and I'm right now it's just there so i'm just clicking i'm just alt tabbing to get to that all right so let's have a look here's another one what does this look like i'm just going to drag it in here and just just have a look and see what i'm doing i'm just experimenting with these different overlays and uh and they can just really be useful uh let's go here Let's go to overlay, soft light, maybe screen. Oh, okay. This is kind of cool. I like this, but I want to put it behind our model. So now I'm just going to drag it down, drag it behind our main model. Let's do this. There we go. So see how that's adding a kind of an interesting effect there. And so we could, of course, drop the opacity of that if you just wanted to have a little bit. And, uh, you know, this one here. So you get the general idea. So what I'm doing is I'm just basically playing around now with different overlays. And let's put that one back over the top again and see how now we're starting to get so much more depth. Oh, and by the way, if you guys, I'll give you a link to those, those overlays if you guys care. Um, Cause I'm sure somebody's gonna ask. I always get asked, what was that you were using? And this is it here. This is the design cuts. It's called mystical lights is the one I'm using here. Let me just post that in there. So that's that's what I used for that. And, uh, you know, so we're just kind of playing around with this composite. So I think we've got quite a bit of stuff going on in there. And there's other things, you know, we could add like flares and different things like that. But let me show you a little tip that I like to do with composites sometimes is I like to take everything. I've selected the bottom layer and I'm going to hold down the shift key to select. Actually, I don't even have to do that. I'm selecting them all, but you 
all you really need to do is click the top layer and then do the Avengers. The Avengers is shift alt option. That's all the three modifiers. You know, I've said this before, shift is the Hulk, command or control is Captain America and alt could be Iron Man or, you know, or, you know, whoever you want. And then let's hold those three down there and then hit the E key for merge G and then that gives us a merged layer on top. And this layer on top contains everything and all the other layers. And this enables me to just kind of work with these together. So, you know, if I wanted to do something like maybe go in here and go to filter, we're gonna to go to camera raw filter here. And now I can apply a camera raw adjustment to the entire image. So, you know, if we wanna change the look and feel, we can go up here under basic, Want to make it brighter? Maybe we will make it brighter. Let's hit these highlights and shadows a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to push this a little bit. Uh, let's push the whites, the blacks. And I'm going to hit that texture. So I'm actually going to go a little overboard with some of these textures and things, just for fun, clarity. Because this is going to create almost like a video game kind of effect by doing this. Uh, we might come back in the contrast. There we go. And I might roll off the blacks, you know, rather than have harsh blacks, you know, let's kind of go for more of a low contrast look. See what we're doing here? We're kind of stylizing the image now. And maybe we'll punch up the vibrance and bring down the saturation. And see what we're doing? See how this is really changing it? If we go here before and after, it's bringing out more texture and it's bringing out more detail. And this is just one direction you could go. Of course, there's so many different directions you could go with this. Um, but let's take the temperature. I want to warm it up a little bit. There we go. So now we're getting a little bit more of a comic book um, video game um, advert kind of a style. So let's click OK. And now we can see those adjustments. There it was before and there it is afterwards. Thank you, Tom. Um, Tom said amazing tutorial. Very nice of him. Um, okay, so if we look at this now, we've got there's the before and there's the after. Now, what if we want to punch this a little bit more and I want to give it more grit and more detail. I'm going to hit control J and what that's doing is it's copying this. So now we've just got two layers of it. Now I'm going to go into overlay mode. It's going to change the appearance for a second, but don't worry. Sometimes you might like this effect. You know, if you, it's kind of cool, darker comic book kind of style, but that's not what we're doing. We're going to go for sharpening. We're going to do high pass sharpening. So we're going to choose filter. And then we're going to go down and then we're going to choose not sharp and believe it or not we're going to go to other and in other we're going to choose high pass now this is where we can do our sharpening if i reduce this there's our original image and i can push it up and notice how this sharpens it now obviously i'm not going to go ridiculous like this although you could if that was a look you were going for um i'm going to go just a little bit in there and then if we look at this before and after, we're doing our sharpening. Now, sometimes I like to do the high pass sharpening because then I can also apply a layer mask. I know we're building on this. And I hit the D key and the X key. So what I'm doing is I'm just basic. I just said black is the foreground color. It's <laughs> probably you should have just said that. And let me grab a brush. Okay, so what I'm gonna do with this brush now is I want to just brush away the areas I don't want sharpened, which is the background. I don't want those distant areas to be sharpened. I want them to go more into the background because this is going to add more depth to the photo. So if we look at this now, before and after, it's subtle. Uh, hang on, let me hold down the shift key. Before and after, see how now this area here is not sharp anymore? And the sharpening is just applying to our model and this area, and you might even just go over here and reduce the sharpening over there as well. And I'm just doing this in big strokes. And now our model is sharper than the background. And this kind of just makes it pop because as you know, you know, if it lands, things in the background are gonna be more blurred than things in the foreground. And of course, you know, we could go crazy and apply some kind of a, a blur filter to this if we wanted. But, you know, we're not gonna do that, but I'll show you how we would. Why don't I just show you how we would do that? What I would do is I would just create probably another composite layer just so we don't ruin our photo, just so I can kind of show you. And I'm just gonna do the Avengers again in the E key. And this is just to show you just a, a direction you might go with it. Now we could convert this to a smart object. 
So when I convert this to a smart object, what this does is it enables me to apply my filters non-destructively. So now we're going to add a blur. So we're going to choose filter blur. We're going to grab our Gaussian blur. And I'm just going to blur this background. Now I probably like lens blur better, but this this will work. So I'm going to blur this background. Notice everything is blurred, right? But I don't want to blur the whole photo. I want my model sharp. So what I'm going to do, and this is why I create these composite layers that I never flatten, is I want to go down and I say, ah, there's my model. There's that mask. So I'm just going to control click and that loads in the selection from that mask. And now I can reuse it. Let me go in here under my smart filter and I'm going to hit the alt backspace and boom. What I've done there is I just pasted the pixels from my mask and notice now she's sharp and the background is blurry. So that means, you know, if I go into here under the Gaussian blur, I can change that, but it's not affecting our model because I've mastered out using the smart filter. This is one of the big reasons that you would want to use smart objects or smart filters because we have the option to do this kind of cool stuff and work, you know, in this non-destructive way. Just look at the flexibility that we're getting here. Um, <laughs> we're not going to do that, but I'll show you how we would. That's, uh, yeah, sorry about that, Fred. Sometimes I like to, you know, give people options. Um, so anyway, guys, um, if you're liking this, do me a favor, hit that like button. And also, if you haven't subscribed yet to Photoshop Cafe, just hit that subscribe button there um, for the YouTube channel, and that'll send you notifications when I do more live streams. And I got something new for you. Let me just try this, see how it works. Um, just trying to get better with these. I don't know if this is going to work any good or not, but let's have a look. Trying something out. Let's see where we go here. See how this looks. Uh huh. So, um, so I've got another camera. I'm working on trying to get a better setup using different cameras and different things like that. So, how does that look, guys? Let me know. And I'm gonna go back to our back to our image. Um, so we're gonna keep building this and try and get our whole thing going better as we go. All right, guys. Let's do a couple of questions and then I'm gonna jump into fix my photo. So why don't I just get this iPad turned on where Bruce has pulled out the uh, photos, uh, the photos, the questions, uh, the battery's dead, sorry about that. Let me go in here. I am in my phone and Bruce is, by the way, everyone say hi to Bruce. Bruce is our moderator and he is helping us out. And, uh, and of course I will go in and be looking at the, the questions and answers, even the stuff I don't comment here. I always read all the comments afterwards. Um, so let's see what we've got here. Why don't we just look at the desktop so you guys can see the image. It's probably more interesting than me. All right, let's see what we've got here. Um, uh, for the radio component, is there a way to make a pattern versus a brush that would be easily repeated? Yeah, good point there for this uh, little radio thing I cut out. Um, over here, yes, the radio, the TV, if I made that into a pattern, it would be repeating. That's a good suggestion. Thank you, Tom. Uh, where did you click access, um, to access material on the same place as Bridge? Uh, on Bridge, you just um, navigate to the folder that you want to use. Do you hold a key down to drag layers so fast? Mine are so slow to drag or don't move. Um, no, um, how I do it is I hit the control key and I click and that selects a layer and I just move it around there, Mary, but I probably have a, um, maybe, uh, sorry, that Polkadot Studios. Um, I have maybe a more powerful computer. I have a Mac Pro, um, so it's got a really good video card on it, so that probably makes a big difference. Uh, how do you store your files, external cloud? How big is your storage? Uh, Stephen is asking that question. Uh, Stephen, I have a uh, internal drives and then I have an external RAID, a 32 uh, terabyte RAID. Um, so I save all my files onto there. Only stuff I really save in the cloud is stuff I'm going to reuse, patterns, textures, brushes, things like that, that I need access to from wherever I am. But most of my images, yeah, I save them to my, to my RAID, which is 32 terabytes. And I have a second uh, drive, which I back it up to. Now that'd be a lot of space if you're just working with photos, but I also do video, so I need that extra space there. So um, you could get an external drive. Um, I mean, 
I think last time I saw it was like a four gig external drive. Um, do I have one here? It's a little blue. I have this little blue four gig external drives and you can pick them up at Costco for a hundred bucks. Um, you know, it's amazing how prices have come down on storage, but always save a copy of your stuff. Uh, photo maker, would you use color range or maybe the layer style blend? Yeah, sure. Yep. Use those all the time and they work, um, really well. So what we're going to do, because we've been doing this, I hope you guys have been enjoying this composite. We're going to move on now. And we've got, you know, not a lot of time, but we're going to take a little bit of time and we're now going to go into another segment where we fix my photo. All right, and here we go. Now it's time for fix my photo and we're going to have a look at some of your guys photos. So let's go ahead and I'm going to get these in bridge. We're going to pop these over here and let's go in. Oh, by the way, I guess I should give you an introduction. Let's do the introduction. Fix my photo. This is where you guys submit your photos and I work on them here uh, live during our live stream. And every week we do this. So here's the rules there. Fixmyphoto.net is the place you can upload photos. I prefer raw files. Um, if you don't have them, use JPEGs. A higher res, like 2000 pixels, would be really good. Um, now I prefer them unedited because it's hard to edit photos that have already been edited, especially if they've been over sharpened and things like that. Um, put your name in the file name so we know who you are when you upload them. So we know who these photos belong to and who uploaded them and I can shout you out and maximum of three submissions per person. Now I would say that's three submissions each time. Once we use your photos or we move into a different batch of photos, feel free to upload three more and do I select these at random um kind of sort of but I do just kind of go through and look at the photos and say okay what's gonna work well for what we're gonna do this week so we can see these are this week's submissions and um so guys I hope you submit some of yours for next week we're gonna go through those and, uh, and this is what we do so there's some really good submissions this week I'm loving what I'm seeing here and by the way, if we didn't use yours from previous weeks, don't worry. We're going to have times when we go back and we're going to be using some of the others. So there's some that have been submitted I haven't used yet. Doesn't mean we're not going to use them, just so you know. All right, so let's look at these. And I'm going to have a look at this one here. This is um, Tarko, Tarko Howing. Are you here? Are you in the house? Uh, say hi if you are. And uh, we'll see what we can do here. Let's see what we got here. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to open this, double click it, and it's going to go into Camera Raw. And the reason this open in Camera Raw is because it's a raw file shot on a Nikon. I can tell because it's a NIF. All right, so this is a great photo. I really love this photograph of the steam train. This is, this is really cool. So one of the first things I would do is I would crop this because I don't think we like this pole here. Um, so why don't we hit the crop tool? And what we're going to do is just drag it up. And right now I've got constrained proportions turned on, which is this padlock. Pardon me. And we're just going to go up there because we don't want that. I think we also need to straighten it a little bit. And we're in the right place for straightening because where the crop tool is, we also have the straighten tool. So we click on here and we're going to click and drag. And this is inside camera raw, by the way, which comes with Photoshop. All right, so we're kind of straightened out a little bit, maybe a little too much. Let's go back. And if you want to see, um, well, let's try that again. I'm just going to click on it. I'm going to drag again. There we go. So you want to just kind of choose your horizon. And I'm going to crop that down a little bit more there. I do like it coming into the scene. Let's hit enter. And now it's coming into the scene. It's looking pretty cool. And we've got this neat train. All right, so let's see what we can do about bringing out some of the details. So let's go to our basic panel here. And I usually do my basic adjustments here inside a camera raw or in Lightroom before I take it into Photoshop and enhance it and do different things. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to open up those shadows a little bit because that shows a little bit more of that detail there. Let's play, play around with the color temperature. I'm warming it up just a little bit. 
you'll find that I do that quite a lot, unless I'm going for more of a moody kind of a feel. Uh, contrast this, reduce it. Let's give it a little texture. Just touch on the vibrance. And I think we're kind of getting there. Now I'm going to go back on the saturation. So when I increase the vibrance, a lot of the time, I'll reduce the saturation to kind of compensate. Now this depends. I mean, if you're going for a very kind of vivid, you know, um, kind of look, you can do that with the vibrance increase it and stuff. But sometimes I like to take the saturation down a little bit. And here's a little trick that I could do. Sometimes I'll take the saturation and pump up the contrast to go for something more cinematic. But we're not going to do that today. I'm going to go a different way. We can take that contrast down, boost the saturation a little bit more. And let's have a look, see where we're at. So there was the before image, minus the crop, of course. And then the after image with the crop. I feel like that's kind of coming together quite nicely. And we're going to click open. Open this inside of Photoshop. So one of the things I might do is try to clean up that little sign there. So, you know, you want to kind of do that sometimes. Let me just go in here, grab our patch tool. This might be a good case for the patch tool. I say might because if it doesn't work, we'll use a different tool. So let's try that. Let's go around the patch and drag it off to the side. And you know what? That worked really good. So patch tool did its job quite nicely today. And you know, if it hadn't, I probably would have tried, you know, maybe using content aware fill. So, you know, there's different tools inside of Photoshop. And if one doesn't work, try another one. And honestly, you know, there's so many different ways of doing things in Photoshop. And it's not necessarily that one is better than the other. Sometimes one just doesn't work. And then if it doesn't work, use another method. That's why it's good to know multiple ways of doing different things. So when you see someone doing something different, they're not necessarily doing it wrong. They just got a different approach and it's worth learning that because you know it might come in use to you one day all right great let's have a look here that was one image down and why don't we do another one there was a nice image here that i saw that i felt like it just needed a little bit of work let me find that one i really do like our um hdr to the bonnie and maybe we might have a look at that one another time because i don't think we're gonna have time today let me have a look there was someone in my neighborhood that submitted something here and i can tell because here we go don haynes he obviously lives close to me or he visited uh crescent park i uh, crescent bay i know that very well at laguna beach um you guys probably seen this i mean if you're in the area or something similar to that. We're not going to be using this photo today, though. I want to look at your other one, though, uh, Don. I want to look at your dog and rider sunset. So let's double click and open this. Are you in the house, by the way? Let me know if you're here. If we're working on anybody's uh, photo and you're here, shout out, say hi. Say hey, Don. All right, so I'm loving this. This is a good shot we've got here um, of him and his dog doing a sunset. It looks like you've given me the layers. This is great. So let's go down here, and do we have an original image? I don't think we have a fully original image. I can see what you've done there, and this is this is good. This is good work. Um, oh, I think he might have been using luminosity masks. Yes, he was. So here's different luminosity masks that he created. Um, good guess, huh? Um, so we go in here in the channels, and he's created luminosity masks in order to bring out more detail. Now, I've got a tutorial I did on basic luminosity masks recently, and there's another one we're going to be doing in the future, um, which is a little more complex. I'm not going to do luminosity masks right now because we just don't have the time, but this is what he did. And so he's able to selectively hit these different tones. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see what we can do inside of Camera Raw because I believe we can do a pretty good job here. So let's go under here, and we're going to choose Filter, camera raw now i can tell this is not an original photo either i just want to say that because we've got a little halo around here and a little halo around the dog so this is not the original image i wish i had it but that's okay so we're going to go in here we're going to choose filter camera raw filter all right so what he did is he brightened up this area which was kind of nice so maybe we can do something similar let's grab our radio filter and we're going to brighten up this area 
Now, obviously, yes, this is going to go over and it's also going to hit our shadowed areas, but don't worry about that. All right, so what we're going to do here is make sure we've got it. Yep, we're in the foreground here. We're going to increase the exposure. Just want to brighten this up. So what I'm going to do is open up the shadows. No, we're not going to do that. Too much noise. Um, we are going to hit our... Let's go down. I want vibrance, which doesn't exist inside here, but we have our saturation. Let's go in here. Yeah, they, let me make sure I'm on the left side. Sorry, guys. All right, so let's hit the exposure up. So what we're doing is we're simply brightening up this area so we can see that sunset more vibrant. It's looking pretty good. And there's no uh, vibrance under the radial filter or any of the local filters. Instead, it's just saturation. Um, I wish they would put vibrance in there. Maybe at some point they will. I'm not going to do noise reduction yet because there's noise on the entire image. And I want to get rid of it altogether. All right, so what we're going to do is maybe even give this a little bit more into that area. So what we're looking at so far is this. So that's what he did. He brightened up that area in the middle. We're going to do that now. But we don't want it on our people and our dog because it's just adding to the noise. It's not looking good. So one of the things we can do with this is grab our range mask. That's interesting. That should be showing. Let me just go away and click back in again. There's our filter. Let me make sure our filter is selected. There's our filter. There we go. Select our filter. There we go. Now we can go in our range mask. And what we're going to do is we're going to use luminance. So I hope you guys can see that way down the bottom there. Range mask luminance. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the shadows push it to the left and we're rolling that effect away from the shadow. See that? So now if I hit the, the key, it's only affecting the bright areas, not the shadow areas. So we're able to punch that sunset without adding to the blacks there or adding the noise. So now we're going to go into our regular layer, our regular adjustments the basics. And then we're going to go down and let's do a little noise reduction on here. So that's going to be under our detail. Let me zoom in. See, we've got the noise there. Now, people often ask me, what's the difference between color noise and regular noise? See the colored speckles here? If we use color noise reduction, see how those colored speckles, there they are before. There they are before. And after, see now the colored speckles are gone and now it's just a uniform grain which is just one color now the nice thing about using that for a lot of it is we're not messing up the image or losing detail it's just getting rid of those speckled colors which happen a lot when you scan as well by the way and maybe this was a scanned photo maybe that's why it looks this way it's possible um all right so then we're going to take our noise reduction now and we're going to increase our noise reduction and now what we're doing is we're reducing that noise now if we zoom out a little bit and see where we are there. Let's give it a little play around. I, I might get aggressive with that noise reduction. Let's see how it looks. Here we go. I'm taking that detail down. There we go. I'm getting more aggressive than I normally would. And the reason for this is we're working with a silhouette. So we could get away with it. But you know the problem is the sky is getting blurred as well. So... What we can do is watch this. Let's go to the gradient. And what we're going to do is we're going to apply a gradient on here. So this gradient means, actually I'm going to flip it around the, flip it around the other way. So I want the green at the bottom. So let me just drag this. Okay, this way. And let's pull this up. All right. So with the green at the bottom, that means everything outside of that green is going to be affected and everything above it is not. And this is going to be our gradient area. So now I can get more aggressive with that noise reduction. And see what it's doing? It's just reducing that noise in the ground now and it's not affecting the sky and blurring the sky. So I'm going to click on all adjustments and that applies it. Now we can go down to our noise reduction, apply a global noise reduction, which is going to reduce it in the clouds, but now it's not making them blurry. And there we go. There's our image. And if we look at it before 
and after we can see we did this here so let me click OK to open it and that's our image there well, let's compare this with the luminosity masks the luminosity masks are looking really nice they're working good but I think this is giving us a little bit of a cleaner result there so anyway guys I hope you found that interesting and um, so as far as the actual tutorial part now we are finished with that so um, if you like this hit that like button um, smash it into dust and that helps